So let me just show you this. Here's my rain gauge. Can you see how full that is? Low pressure has moved in and um, really we've had over 50 mil of rain, which is absolutely fantastic. But um, as you know, the clock is ticking regarding our nectar flow. So um, I'm really getting quite anxious. Uh, I've got queens in the incubator in a minute. I'm gonna go in with you and we're gonna um, take them out and put them in the queen bank. And therefore insemination this week, me and Alicia are gonna inseminate a load of queens. So we've got about 50 to do, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's all good, but this weather has really kind of, um, I'm, I'm kind of in two minds really how to take this. One, it could be absolutely perfect. We've got rain, it's gone in the ground and it's kept going. That 50 mil has gone a long way down and there's means the clover is now gonna flower. But the clover was basically dying off because it was so dry. Um, on one hand, we'd had fantastic weather for mating, three weeks of blinding sunshine, beautiful temperatures, and now you can hear the rain is still falling, even though the sun is out. So we've got the humidity, we've got the water in the ground, so it's great. So in that respect, I'm really pleased. And if it does go good, we could have an amazing nectar flow. But if it carries on like this, it's basically a disaster. Uh, there'll be no bees flying, there'll be no surplus nectar, there'll be food in the hive, but not to the volumes to fill the supers. So it all kind of hangs on the next three weeks. But also the brambles are now um, absolutely um, revived. They were drying right out. The surface was like really shallow and dry here. And a lot of our bramble needs water quite often. So let's go and look at some of the clover here. So this is the clover we have in Europe. It's a little, uh, it's a smaller version. I know the clover you get in the uh, United States, North America is sort of like, you know, four or five foot tall. But this, this clover here is um, a, uh, a European type, I believe. But anyway, it's a short clover, but the bees go absolutely nuts on it. And there's loads of that. It's just literally all these little white flowers. You can see that's all clover. There's a few daisies mixed in there. But what I'm trying to say to you is it's going to explode now. It doesn't look much, but within about a week, the ground will be white with it. So that's a really good thing, you know, and that has all come up. Um, it's, there's even a bee on it over there. One of my, I don't know if you can see that there. There's a bee already starting to scout there which is fantastic, you know? But there's gonna be so much food. I mean, all our chestnut trees are coming into flower. Let's go and look at some bramble. So this is the, uh, there's two different types basically, but we've got a three leaf here and a five leaf. And there's actually, believe it or not, a lot more subspecies, but just to give you some idea, the amount of flowers about to come out, you can see here, you know, it's just, the place is just alive with insects, you know? There's honeybees on that one there, look. See, they're just basically looking for flowers. There's loads coming out. It's the, the, the bramble is gonna just like weep nectar now, which is fantastic. All these buds in the next three weeks are all gonna come out and, and burst. I mean, you just look over there. I love to keep patches of bramble here. It's a complete nightmare, the stuff, but it gives my bees some extra. This is right in front of my house. And I, I use this bit of land because my barn now is hunting the other side of it, which is, uh, um, got long grass, so I kind of manage the two as like a bit of an eco thing for the house here and for my, for my barn house. But uh, all this is just bramble here. You can see and there's loads of it everywhere, all around in the hedgerows. The bees are starting to forage, but they're just not getting the time and they need long hours now. Don't forget a nectar flow. To have a good nectar flow, you need, you need the nectar in the trees, which they've got now because they've got the humidity and, and they've got the ground water. The chestnut trees, that's another thing because the, the water that's fallen won't really get to the roots in time, but it will get to some of it because we've had so much. But because there's always a residual amount of water and the air is humid, the nectar in the chestnut trees will probably be pretty good because it, the, the environment isn't severe. The sun isn't too strong. The flowers will kind of weep nectar well. They'll, they'll almost like sweat it because the um the air is humid and there'll be no they'll be trying to lose moisture because the leaves won't lo lose moisture through evapotranspiration because the air is humid 
And because it's not too hot, there'll be less stress on the tree. So the flowers will have lots of nectar in them. And that is brilliant. And the temperatures next week look like 20, 24, 23, maybe a little bit warmer towards the end of the month, which is fantastic. So it could be brilliant. But so getting back to what you need, you need um, nectar in the flowers, but you need long days, which we've got now because it's midsummer. We need long foraging hours. So as long as it's calm and as long as there's no wind, we should be absolutely fine. But we just have to hope across everything that we get that combination of things. If you don't know sweet chestnut, I thought I'd just show you what it is that's actually about to flower. This is a tree that I planted in my garden about six years ago. I grew it from seed. I've got other ones here that are actually bigger than that. All these trees I planted myself, but they're all kind of doing their own thing and some are bigger, some are smaller, but I do, even though there's tons of this stuff around, I love having my own one here because it's nice to go and look at it. And you can see this is just starting. And if I could have smell of vision the smell is like sweet, sickly, almost uh, insipid a smell, you know? You can see the bees are moving in on it. Bram uh, bumblebees love it too. They just can't get enough of it. You can see one of my bees on that. And I know it's one of mine because I'm at home and my apiaries are just up the road. But, uh, well, they're just over the hedge, basically. But the bees love it. Um, it's a great time for everybody. It's the bonus time. Um, it's, the, it's that time of year where I've got to be really careful. So because the flow is starting and I know even though we don't have a, if we don't have a huge crop in our supers, I still have to manage my colonies here really carefully. And when you're trying to raise queens and when you're trying to juggle finishers and starters, it, the work becomes huge because having no flow on when you're running finishes and starters is actually a lot easier than when the flow is on because when the flow's on you've got to factor in the pressure on the colony because through that door is coming all the extra nectar all the extra pollen all the extra food which is fantastic providing you give them space and you literally have to go in every three days take out frames they've just built and give them more frames just to keep uh circulating that nectar just to keep giving that queen room in the bottom to lay and just to keep uh you know, comes things moving on. Otherwise they just swarm, you know? There's so much pressure on a strong queen. She wants to lay all the time. She's trying to prepare for the end of the year. She's trying to get things ready. She's just doing the best she can and you're messing around with her colony and, or the colony, and you want to make sure that you just manage it right. Because at the end of the day, what I do with my five over fives is I split them into two or three at the end of the year. And it's, it's kind of keeping them in a state where they're always strong. They are always got nurse bees. So I, every now and again, I take a split from them or every now and again, I take out a frame of honey from them. Cause obviously in the top section, they tend to use it as a super and the bottom section, they use it for brood rearing, but that's not really the exact way they do it it's often a mix so what you'll find in the top of the finisher is two to three frames of honey i mean i mean blocks of honey and then the middle two sections generally are an extension of the brood going from the bottom to the top so what you have to do is you constantly have to rotate the um, brood at the bottom up to the top so you've got larvae in the top so that the nurse bees come up to the top to your cells you put in that are finished and that's basically how it works but as I say in the flow it all becomes complicated so let's go inside let's get these queens out of the incubator and then we're going to put them into the queen bank for later in the week so you see the top all hatched out all empty now and there's all our queens they're all going to go in now, so I'm going to take them over to the um, to a colony that's got a lot of nurse bees, and I'm going to put four nurse bees in each one to accompany these in my banking frame. Now, I've tried my banking frame several times this year, and I'm reasonably happy with it. I'm still not overly happy with it, but I'm reasonably happy with it. The reason being is I think the queens still need a little bit more space. So you might have seen these cages I was making up at the beginning of the year, the little square cages, which give the queens a little bit more room. But I haven't had time to finish putting them all together. So I'm still using this, and it's working fine. I lose a few, but it's all about the nurse bees in your queen bank, that's the issue. What you need is a lot of nurse bees to feed through the cage. So it doesn't matter really what cage you've got, they will feed through the side of these and they will feed your virgin queens. So these are now day two. 
they need they needed to go in yesterday, but the weather was so bad I couldn't get them in. And as it happens, my nurse bee Conley was actually a bit of a lower nurse bee. So yesterday afternoon, I managed to go to um, a lot of other nukes I've got and harvest some emerging brood and put that in my nurse bee Conley. So that's overnight, that would have come up because I found brood that was hatching. So then I'm gonna go and give it some more and keep giving it more because the, the key to getting your queens to hold well is lots and lots of nurse bees and pollen sub and feed, give them feed. And also like a cell builder, put in a frame of foundation because it gives the nurse bees that are a bit older something to do when they become wax builders. You do not want them building wax on everything if you can avoid it. It won't be a problem, but um, it will help keeping the, your cages clean and access to the, to the queens well. So I'm gonna take these all down in a bucket and we're gonna go and put nurse bees in these. So I picked a Conley here that's gonna be, uh, with one of my five over finds, this is a, a beautiful, queen that's so gentle and I want gentle bees in with my um, in with my uh, my queens I've got here I have to go for each one it's gonna take quite a while but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you two things I I will put this uh, frame banking frame you I've shown you before into in amongst the other frames so it'll look like a normal dadon frame but I also put a lot just on top of the frames with a reversed crown board and that gives the bees room to walk over and feed them I mean there's a lot of bees I've got here a lot of queens throw to put in one colony, but I haven't got another one ready and it will be fine because it'll be well fed. And there's a lot of nurse bees hatching. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm just gonna sit and take out, um, take these out one or two at a time, but I can pick a nice frame, put the frame alongside here and the nurse bees will just sit there, you know? So it should be absolutely great. Um, the other reason I'm using another colony to give me nurse bees is I wanna, I wanna keep adding nurse bees into the other colony. I know it's only, four or five in each box, but that's another 200 nurse bees in that one colony that's gonna help. Um, and also I'm, I'm gonna make this a finisher because it's a five over five. In other words, there's 10 frames that the queen can lay in at the moment. I made these up as drone flight cages, but I also gave them the option. I've got a thin, thin sheet of metal over there. So if everyone had to change this top to a drone flight cage, I can do. But I made them up in the spring and I'm using them for extra five over five, so it gives me plenty of capacity. So I'll take this top off and we'll take out some nurse bees. Just to add, the reason why these bees are flying like crazy is because we've, uh, we've got a flight amongst this weather. So we've got a gap in the clouds and all the drones have come out. I've got some drone colonies here. There's loads of drones flying. Loads and loads of the double brood here with droning and tons of nurse bees. This is one of my main drone colonies. All wonderful. Loads and loads of bees. And it's not even hot weather. They're just coming out and pooping. You know, they're just crapping everywhere. But the drones are getting out for a very short flight, which would mean that you will get queens making mating flights, even on on short gaps in the weather of 20 minutes, half an hour. That's all they need to go off and mate. And obviously these guys coming back in haven't, haven't mated with any queen because they're alive. But at least there's plenty of drones there. I'm happy with that. And I really strengthened this drone colony as well because I know that in a time of dearth, when the weather was bad and there's no pollen coming in and it's, it's that June gap that we have here that comes a little bit earlier than the UK, for example, they can bin the drones out. And to make more drones is 40 days. So I'm really pleased to see plenty of drones there, but we should be all right now for the rest of the summer because I can feed these, which I have, but I'll feed them again, you know? So I've just found the queen, luckily. It makes things easy for me. There she is. But we got the rain is just starting again, but I've got to keep going for as long as I can, get these done. So I found a frame of nurse bees that next to where the queen was lying and there's larvae in this frame. So I know these nurse bees are feeding larvae. So I've got time now to take the nurse bees and put four in each one. Yes, you do get stung on the fingers. But come on, what are you, a man or a mouse? More cheese, please. There you go. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, and then after that, they go into my um, banking frame. I'm gonna fill this up. I'll get 32 in this and the other ones will go on top. It'll take a little while. The queens are good. They're all nice and alive. Looking nice in there. These are daughters of a cow. Just because I know she's a purebred. She's island mated. Lovely little nurse bees here. They're also with nurse bees who are less likely to get stung because they're pretty quick. Well, the thing with this, you've got to be quick. You know, you just get on with it and do it. It takes a while, I don't deny. 
you know it's fiddly it's not the best thing you get the odd sting but you know if you want to have bees to in queen queen bees to inseminate that are the right age that are healthy and strong i think this is what you need to do i think it's much better to have much better to have um queens that are really well looked after when they're in the um in this stage and they will be much better later on you know i just think that's the best way incidentally i haven't marked these queens because they're going to be marked when they're asleep and they're inseminated they're going to have um each each bee will have uh so each queen will have a uh, a number tag on the wing clipped because it's going to mark an inseminated queen and other people have asked me oh why aren't you showing insemination i kind of will do but just bear with me the reason is it's such a specific process and such a complicated issue because you've got to have drones you've got to have queens ready you've got to have hatch queens that are ready not just queens they've got to be banked they've got to be you've got to have your insemination gear clean you've got to have it sterilized there's all these issues that you have to have ready before you even begin to inseminate and it's a specialized thing so i've got alicia staying with me at the moment we're going to be doing more i'm going to be doing most of it but she's going to be helping and overseeing my technique to make sure that i'm doing it properly because i inseminated a, uh, four queens uh two weeks ago i managed to get two inseminated and so i got four inseminated two survived because i basically couldn't get i couldn't get the um the the insemination tip into the queen I, one of those things where you try and try and try and unfortunately the two queens died but ow just got a sting but the other two made it and they're now laying away and I'm very pleased because of that. It means I have some inseminated queens and I just, it's just a complete matter of practice. Insemination is repeating, is refining your technique, reading more about the problems you have because everybody has problems with something. It's not a thing like riding a bike, once you've ridden it, you'll never forget it. You, you, there is that, but you've got to refine your technique all the time to make sure you do it correctly and the best way possible, you know? So um, I'm going to just do these now and I'll get back to you when they're all finished. I'll we'll fill all these up and hopefully I won't have too many more stings and I won't be too uh, rude to you by the time I speak to you. Right, so we're done. I've just had to sit through rain to get this lot all done. And Alicia is still standing over there in the rain with a cup of tea for me. <laughs> Let's get these back in this box get these into the, uh, the, the nurse bee colony and then we'll be done for the day. So we've got a gap in the weather again. We had to stop for rain as you saw. Oh, I left the space for the frame, that's great. Yes, no, I actually put a lot, of, um, a lot of nurse bees in this colony last night, as I said before. So um, I was looking for another frame to add still, but I'm going to move this across. I've got pollen sub on here, which they're devouring beautifully, a big slab of it. And that'll give them plenty of food to feed, hungry. Nice frames like that of nurse bees, so they're all hatching out nicely. It's not the strongest of colonies at the moment. I would like a bit more strength to it, but that's just one of those things. It's all I can do, but I've got to get these in some kind of a bank. So here they are, that's in my banking frame. Everyone has nurse bees, they'll be revived. They're a little bit cool. In they go. And the queens will be, they will be um, happy to receive those. And the other ones, I know this is what a lot of people do anyway. They just put their cups just on top of the frames. And the bees then can come up through the frames, feed them. This works just as well, I don't deny. It's just a good, it's good a thing to do sometimes. But I'm just trying different things to find the best thing that works for me. I get emails from people that ask, which way should I do it? I say, there's this way, there's that way, but no way is the right way. You have to find a method that works for you with everything. That's what beekeeping is, I'm afraid. Trial and error. So they are in, done. So on goes. Back this top. They are now in the warm. 
I've got a feeder to go on this as well. I'm gonna to top this up in a moment. Let's get some uh, sugar for that. That means that these can all be fed. Can be hot, there can be sugar going into the colony when it's raining. There's plenty of bees, as I said. They're all nice nurse bees. I'll check, there's no queen in this at the moment. So overall, it's, it's the right setup. It just needs to be a little bit stronger, but you know, that's the way things go. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going up back up top to dry off. Uh, next week we're going to be going monitoring all the colonies to check, see how they're doing and looking at supers if we get this flow. Now fingers crossed for all that, that's thunder in the background, the showers, and also we're going to be ins inseminating probably Friday, Saturday, end of the week. But until then, hope you enjoy your bees and take care. Speak to you soon. Bye bye.